And joining me right now on the Molesburg panel, Noah Rothman, assistant online editor with Commentary Magazine, and Hank Scheinkopf, PhD, president of Scheinkopf Communications, Democratic political consultant, and Newsmax contributor. Gentlemen, let's get to it, but first, let's watch this. Think of Donald Trump's personal qualities, the bullying, the greed, the showing off, the misogyny, the absurd third grade theatrics. Watch, by the way, how he responds to my speech today. Will he talk about our policy differences? Or will he attack me with every imaginable low road insult? This may tell you what you need to know about his temperament, his stability, and his suitability to be president. All right, uh, let's get right to it. Uh, Noah, you wrote a piece, uh, The False Inevitability, inevitability uh, Narrative, uh, after the uh, Super Tuesday uh, uh, results came in. Does this add to that? Is this going to make a difference? Is Donald Trump now less inevitable because of Mitt Romney or maybe more inevitable? You know, I don't know whether or not Mitt Romney's speech will have much of an impact on the race. If it does, we, there's really no way to measure it just yet. Um, <clears throat> so it might. But he proved, Donald Trump proved, Mitt Romney absolutely correct in his uh, uh, response to Mitt Romney's speech when he, uh, he asserted that he didn't rebut any of the challenges and he asserted that Mitt Romney was so obsequious to him in 2012 that he could have told him to get on his knees, quote, and he would have obliged. Um, it's this, you know, very shallow alpha male act, a little bit uh, sexually suggestive as well, uh, frankly, as sort of a domineering effect. And it's very juvenile and it absolutely makes uh, Mitt Romney's case for him. Mitt Romney, by the way, is more liked in, among Republicans than Donald Trump is, to the tune of 35 to 15 percent in favorability ratings as far as well, the last may, polls go. Maybe Megan, so, Kel maybe Megan Kelly will uh, consider that a misogynistic, yeah. sexist remark and ask him about it tonight. Hi, Hank, uh, how do you see uh, any effect that this uh, knocking of Trump will have? Yeah, it'll make him the nominee quicker, faster, and with more intensity. Mm -hmm. You know, what people are not paying attention to is something we've talked about on this program for a long time, which is the populist effect on both the right and the left. Trump on the right, and Sanders on the left. People don't care about decency in discussion. They don't care about discourse that makes sense. What they care about is their own anger, and they're imprinting it on these candidates, and they don't like the establishment. And what is more establishment than a guy who lives in Utah named Mitt Romney, who's a billionaire by himself and who beat, who got beaten last time by a fellow named Barack Obama. And, and Noah, for, you know, let's let, let's overlook the hypocrisy of uh, of of the you know the endorsement that was given by Trump uh, to uh, to Romney four years ago, and Romney saying what a great businessman he was, better than he Romney is, etc., and how much he cherished the endorsement. Let's just say, I mean, just take the Harry Reid aspect. What Harry Reid did to Romney and the accusations he made, Romney proudly did that again today. I have reason to believe there's a bombshell, and he. Didn't didn't contribute to charity and maybe he didn't do this and maybe he didn't do that what the heck is that well I, I think that's actually pretty dirty politics as far as Mitt Romney goes but guess what this is this isn't a game we're talking about the fate of the Republican Party the Republican Party explodes if Donald Trump is the nominee the Senate have we already have out senators who are saying they're off the team if he's the nominee and you have something like 12 senators that are telling the new york times that they're out of here the party explodes it really ceases to exist so those are the stakes and when you play those stakes that high you play to win so yeah Mitt romney's playing a little below the belt but guess what that's what you have to play in order to save this party the, the presidency the nom the 2016 might be off the table at this point Hank, i think the game is to I save the gop I, I don't agree with any of that no i think that there's something else going on here there's called an electorate They've spoken in many states and they've said, guess what, Donald Trump, they're angry, they're in the to Midwest. The tune of hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, please, if you, if you must. It doesn't matter. That 35% is a good reflective sample of anything. And you know what? The people in this country are very angry. They don't like the establishment. They think Trump is their answer and they're going to do what they want to do. Who cares what they say in the Senate? You know what? Average guy in Minnesota, or excuse me, or Michigan and Missouri, or Ohio, who's about to lose everything because the community he lives in is falling apart because of automation. His job is gone. His lifestyle is gone. Doesn't really care what uh, Mitt Romney uh, and, thinks. And let's not you folks out there think, oh, Hank's a Democratic operative, which he might be, in, in respectfully so, uh, and he's hoping that Trump's the nominee because he thinks no. Hillary will get it. Wait, wait, I want to point that out. We were talking before we went on air. You don't think Hillary is going to be the, the, the president, e even if she's the nominee, right? I think, I think Trump can beat her. But the most important guy not in the room that no one's talking about is one fellow named James Comey, the director of the FBI, who's got 150 agents working on a case. And if he writes a memorandum or 
suggesting that she is guilty of criminal acts, Comey will be listened to, and not to listen to him will be the end of what we know as our politics. Noah, weigh in on anything and everything you want. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, just there's something strikingly uh, remarkable about the cynicism of the Trump voter who is so mistrustful of institutions that they would back somebody who who's, uh, can be accurately charged as a, a, a racist, as, as being too comfortable with white nationalists, something that's toxic where you can't get elected. But that same voter is so credulous that they would believe Barack Obama's Justice Department will put Hillary Clinton's case to a grand jury and seek a criminal indictment. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Where did Ronald Reagan announce his candidacy? Where did he announce his candidacy? At the Civil Rights Museum in Montgomery, Alabama? No, he announced his candidacy in the what home he, of the, the excuse KKK me, at the home of the Confederacy in the his, KKK. What, what are you talking his, about? What was his, and what was his letter yeah. to the KKK in 1984? It wasn't especially, it wasn't footsie. I'll he did that. it. All right, guys, that's a great place to end. I know we're all friends. We're getting heated as this whole situation is getting heated. Noah Rothman, as always, thank you. Hank Shankoff, as always, thank you as thank well. You. We're taking your calls next, folks. You can weigh in. Talk to me live. Uh, 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629.